five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett, this is The Ramble, we go until midnight Eastern Time. And we've got a guest for you this evening, yes sir, let's take a look at it. Ladies sure. and gentlemen, once again an old friend, yes, uh, where are you living these days, Stephen Kravitz? Boulder City, Nevada. Boulder City, Nevada. Now, th that is really out of the way because Boulder City, yeah. can I give a little history, was built to accommodate the people who are building Boulder Dam or, right. or Hoover and Dam. And Lake Mead. Huh? And Lake Mead. And Lake Mead as well. That is an artificial lake. So... Uh, he, they, they, they lived there, and that was uh, the accommodations for him. And of course, when they stopped building it, it be, it's remained a city, and the housing remained there. And then they added more housing, and that's where you're living now. Yes, so, yes. And, you know, there's one supermarket. There's no bookstores. There's no movie theater. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But a, a lot of white guys in pickup trucks. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me, I'm just I'm getting over a cold. Anyway, so, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, why did you pick Boulder City? I mean, there are a lot of other because, nothing cities. You no, know, I Nevada. needed to get out of L.A. Yeah, and I went from a studio, 300 square feet, to a two bedroom, 800 square feet. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But and, and it's also cost less. Yeah, uh, but and you're not exactly in the middle of nowhere, but you can see it from there. Yes, you can. Although, I got a dog on Saturday. Really? Uh, I did a rescue. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. He's a red and white husky with two different color eyes. Well, that I had, I knew, uh, I knew a dog. I knew a woman who had a husky, and they had different colored eyes. It may be a trait of the right. of the breed. So, but right. they're big dogs, and they eat a lot. I mean, she used to. Yeah, well, right now. Yeah. Hello. Hello, you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right now, she weighs thirty-five pounds. She's nine months, and I expect you to get up around sixty pounds. Oh boy, that's going to be a lot of feeding, pal. Well, I had a dog similar to her, and he got fed once a day in the morning. Period. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, they, they, and he never, he never bothered you while you were eating. Well, well, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing about about dogs and eating. They eat just massive amounts of food, uh, but right. they eat it all at once. Right. You know, it's not like cats. Cats eat a little bit and leave some for later, right? Yeah. D dogs right, right, right. never do that. They you put down the bowl, bum, 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 there's the food's gone. Right. I, I don't right. know. I can't remember how many day, times a day she fed him. I know she fed him at least once a day because he wasn't starving to death. But he may not have been doing He may. She may have just been doing it once a day. But anyway. Yeah, a lot of people do it twice a day. Big, beautiful, lo loving dogs. Huskies, you know. Uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're there to serve you, right? They're there to pull a sled if you need them. Right, right. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm going to rescue her, and she's to rescue me. But rescue you from what? Well, yeah, I, I know. Don't know if I, I told you, I, I've been very sick this year, so I didn't work at all. Yeah, yeah. So I I needed to get outside of myself and have something to take care of, something to be responsible for. That's great. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how's your you health? Hear about Will? What? Yeah. I've heard, I, of course, I heard about Will. You know, I heard about Will actually the day after it happened because he was supposed to do a, a, a we do it a regular every three week uh, Skype with mm -hmm. each other so that I can put him on the show, right? 
So I call him, mm -hmm. and he's always ready to go. Maybe he's a couple of minutes late, but he was ready to go, and there was nobody there. And I kept trying, mm -hmm. and then I called his phone, and then I called another phone, and Debbie picks up. And right. I, said, I said, this is Alex. Where's, where's Will? She says, in the hospital. He had a stroke. Wow. So I was, wow. I was kind of there from day one almost, you know, the, yeah. and hearing about this. And it it's really, you know, think about it. Uh, you know, you may have had a lot of medical problems in the last year. What were, the, what were those problems? Can I ask? I, I remember one time Will and I did your yeah. show. Yeah. And I don't want to say we might have been under the influence, but we were asking for beer when we got to the radio station. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he, here's the thing. Uh, I don't, I, what, what did you exactly go through uh, physically, uh, medically? You had a, you said you had a problem. Well, medically, I have neuropathy in my hands and feet, so okay. they're always shaking and burning. Mm -hmm. And then I, I uh, did a stent in the nut house. <laughs> you, it, so I had to feel better. Yeah, and then I, I had a couple of surgeries, and then it's de uh, December. Yeah, how are you feeling? Now I feel better, much better. Yeah, much better. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get back to doing what I do. Yeah, you know? well, well, I have neuropathy in my in my legs and feet. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm taking medicine for I, that. That's why I'm a little loopy today, is because I take the medicine at right. night. You know. Uh, right. Uh, I Is take, it gabapentin? Well, they gave me gabapentin. I didn't like it. They, but then I went to uh, Lyrica. Or, well, it's actually called um, uh, pregabalin. And huh. it, yeah, and it. Uh, it how, how, how are your feet? How are your feet? They're they're better. They're not. You know, I, it's not going to go away. I think I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. And the medicine, right. if I take it and I don't have to work or anything, is a lot of fun. So, you know, uh, I, you know, who knows? And then, then I've got cancer. I've got prostate cancer. Uh, really? Yeah, but that's, in the, at my age, it's not a big deal. They just take you in. They radiate you maybe by sticking up seeds in the prostate, send you home, and right. uh, uh, you've got a f at least another five years before, you, the, the, well, the statistics up to five years is almost 100% cure. So, right. uh, so, right. so it's not it's not serious. It's like my doctor said. He said you're not going to die from it, but the process of curing you is going to be a little annoying. You know, I get. He said, I get. You. Yeah, yeah. But he said, no, don't wor don't even worry about it. Well, you see, at my age, here here's the thing. I love you're going to love this. How old are you now? Right. You got, got to be about sixty five, right? No, 63. 63. Just a child. Just a child. 63 years of age, all right? And um, uh, so they don't well, say... Well, we've known each other since I was 20. Yeah. Alex. It, what? I've, I said we've known each other since, since what, 81? Yeah, I guess. 82, maybe? Maybe, maybe 82. Yeah. I started in 81. Mm-hmm. That, that's, you know, I, I don't know. I did my first set... On March third, and the only reason I know that is because Larry Bubbles Brown went on after me. Okay, and it was his first time, you and, know, and he's like a savant. And uh, yeah, and if you you, you can go back to him and say, "What day did I have Kravitz on my show?" and he'll give me a couple of dates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and yeah. yeah, so so I'm I'm doing better, and I just want to go uh, back to work. Got to tell you, uh, 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 Steve uh, was uh, did a lot of has done a lot of things in his life, uh, and one of which was the the movie career. Uh, and no, I, was just, I was just thinking about that. Listen to this, Alex. Yeah, I'm doing the Clint Eastwood film, right? Yeah. And at lunch, he's laying out like a banquet. I mean, a royal. Banquet. What, what what film was that? Sudden Impact. Sudden Impact. Yeah. And then I did, I did a film with Eric Estrada, and lunch was a ticket to get you two hot dogs and a Coke at the <laughs> snack bar. <laughs> oh, wow. So Clint Eastwood's good at providing lunch, huh? Oh, and the other thing is, you know, 
I'm young, and so I don't have – we're on location, and they feed you when they feed you, but when you, you know, wrap for the day, it's up to you. Mm-hmm. So I'm eating, and I'm stealing, and I'm eating, and I'm stealing, and I'm eating, and I feel this paw on my shoulder, and I look up, and it, it's Clint, and I'm thinking, I'm going to get fired before I did my first scene. <laughs> and he says to me, you don't have to steal it, Stephen. You can have it. And then he gives me a $50 bill and says, make sure you eat while you're here. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a nice guy. Isn't that a great story? That's a nice guy. Yeah. 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 And you, you had a pretty good part in that film, too. You were one of the thugs in the film. You, you always played. Right. You right. Always... We were in the courtroom, the elevator, and then uh, we die in a flaming car crash. Yes, he dies in a flaming car crash. So he, he can actually say, ladies and gentlemen, he's been killed by Clint Eastwood. So. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like, when we, we shot the car scenes. In the Bay Area, in San Francisco, you know? Yeah. And some of my friends came down, and, you know, and then they said, it's a wrap on Kravitz. And Eastwood, Eastwood comes up to me in front of my friends. He says, good working with you. Pleasure blowing you away. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Isn't it great? He sounds like a nice guy. You, uh, know? you know, I can only... Judge uh, people by the way they treat me, and as far as I'm concerned, I couldn't have been treated it any better. Really? Wow. I, yeah. That's nice to hear because you, I think of him as being kind of Republican and an asshole. And it, right. you, you, what you're doing is going against that stereotype because he, with right. you, he did things he didn't have to do. You weren't a major actor in the film, you know. Right. He didn't have to look at you every day, and yet he no. cared about you. You know, he cared that you felt comfortable and that you had a few bucks in your pocket. That's that's really the best part. Was he? Oh, dur- and I got my SAG card. I got my SAG card. Yeah. Uh, I have a and sa- he let me do all my own stunts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I'm leaning out of the uh, passenger seat in the front mm-hmm. with a baseball bat, and I'm hitting his car, and then I break his back window and throw a Molotov cocktail in. Wow, and that a stunt guy could have done that, but you did it. Right, right. I mean, we're going like sixty miles an hour. Wow. Well, you were a kid then. You you think you could do that today? I'm lucky to get out of the car. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm thinking my next vehicle is going to be a SUV. Yeah. Because they're a little higher up, and it's less bending in my knees. <laughs> Yeah, so you uh, and you did uh, you did quite a few other films. Um, one of which is m- notably Howard the Duck. That was my actually my very first film. Oh, really? Yeah, that I thought... was the first one. It was the second. Uh, 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 but I, I was lucky enough to work with Gene Wilder, you know, Eric Estrada. <laughs> Who? Did, on what film did you work with uh, uh, with uh, Wilder? Oh, woman in red. What 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 was it called? A oh, woman in red. Yeah, that yes. that we mentioned that the last time we talked, and I love this story because I I tell it constantly, and right. and it's a fact right. that if you go see Woman in Red, uh, which there's really no reason to, but if it comes up on Netflix or some or Amazon or whatever, don't yeah, watch the, don't watch the, the movie. Go to the credits, and in the credits, Steve <laughs> Steve Kravitz is in the credits. Yeah, and then and I'm still if, getting residual checks hmm? from it. I'm still getting residual checks from it. Right. From Woman in Red, even though I was never on camera. He, it, they okay. never, sh- they never shot a scene with you, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So they never shot so, a. No, uh, the problem with Gene Watt was, you know, first of all, I was supposed to shoot on a Monday. Yeah. Wednesday, I was in my trailer smoking a doobie, uh-huh. and it's time you can go. You can go. We're not going to use you. And then they, okay. then the movie comes out, and you're in the credits, and you keep getting residuals. That is right, my friend. That's a great showbiz you know why? story. Why? Yeah. What? Why? 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 why did they put you in the credits? Though that's what I can't think of because usually um, the. Uh, Huh? It was a graphic person who just looked at the list and, and not the film. So once they you know, put in, the, once they put you in the credits, they had to keep paying you. 
That's right. That's, right. that's, that's fascinating. Right. Uh, because uh, I did, I did uh, two films with Roger Corman. Actually, I think I did like six. Mm-hmm. And then I did a, a series. We did 22 episodes. What was the series? Well, first we did Black Scorpion in the movie. Then we did Black Scorpion 2. Then we did Black Scorpion in the series. Oh, I see. And from my mind to your ears, don't get it and don't watch it. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. But do you do you still? Oh, hey, 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 a quick little story. I'm, I'm doing this scene with this guy, yeah. and he's supposed to be drunk, so he's drunk. And I said to him, "If you were supposed to be shot, would you want me to shoot you?" <laughs> right. 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 So what? So how are you doing besides besides your feet? Everything good? Yeah. So you were off and running, and having a fairly decent career doing movies yeah uh, and and uh, you, and there's a good reason for that because if you look at the if you're watching our show and i'm running his photograph you can see he's a type okay he's right. a type you you and and your voice adds to that in fact you could probably you never went out for him but you probably could do cartoon characters with that voice you know yeah that's a very close Close group right there. Yeah, yeah, but you, know, you, you have to be to it. Yeah, but you know, you, you, there are people who just work their way into it. We know Tom Kenny, our old friend, who worked worked his way into it slowly, right. and uh, he uh, he then became SpongeBob SquarePants, and now the rest of his life is Clover. What? Right. The thing is, with, with uh, SpongeBob the movie, they changed every voice but his. Wow! You know they brought in bigger guns. Yeah, yeah. So they could and, like, and they couldn't get anybody to do SpongeBob except Tom. Yeah. Wow. That you know, it, but it, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. And then there's a Carlos right. Alas Rocky who preceded him into uh, doing uh, cartoon voices, and then dragged I think Tom into it. And right. uh, Alice Rocky was always trying to get to do voices, and he finally got to do one in some cartoon series or something. Right. And then uh, he started doing a lot of them. You know, once you do one, right. you're then in the club. And uh, it did very well as well. But Tom, you know, hit the jackpot with that thing. Right. And so I don't know if you know Patton Oswalt. Yeah. And of course I know uh, Patton. Yeah. Okay, well, he he uh, he opened up for me at Tempe, and actually gave me a coupon to read some comic books because we were both comic book nerds. Yeah, nicest guy, nicest no, guy. No, sweetheart, sweetheart. I wish I could find him because I'd like to interview him, but I can't. I can't find get a number on him. So, if you ever come across one, let me know, okay, or email address yeah. or, or something. Right. Uh, right. Right. But, right. And, and, uh, no, if I come across it, I would ask him to give me permission to send it to you. Okay, good. Please. Yeah, right. I'm sure he would say okay because he would wouldn't mind talking to me at all. The 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 nicest thing that you know here's what happens when you when you're no longer working. All of a sudden, there are a lot you don't hear from most people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was out of work at one point. And I get a call from Patton at home. And he says, Alex? And I yeah. said, yeah. He says, I'm getting ready to do my HBO special. This is, I wouldn't be able to do this without, I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Wow. He said, and I wanted to thank you, you know. And I just went, geez, you know, I mean, nobody has to thank me. Most people, I think, make their own careers or don't make their right. own careers. And um, he was nice enough to call me and say thank you, and and I just I always appreciated that, you know. Um, yeah. And um, so right. I, if you get if you get a hold of him, I would love to talk to him again, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometime before yeah, I the mean, be, most of my close friends I've known since the eighties. Yeah. 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 And I've been married twice and divorced twice because, you know, I'm not a Mormon and I can't keep both of them. Yeah, well, I uh, I was married. I, I'm on my fourth wife. Okay. Really? Yeah. This one's going to last because we're just taking each other to the grave, you know. Um, 
but it was nothing wrong with good company. It's my fourth. I, I almost can't remember the first. Uh, well, check this out. Her, I it, met my second wife first. Then I met my first wife second. Yeah. And I met my second wife third. You, you met your what? I, I met my first wife. Oh, second. Before I met my second wife. I see. Okay. And what, I mean, wait a minute. Let me start over. <laughs> Yeah, no, I forgot what the hell I was saying. In, no, in other uh, words, you knew your second wife before you got married the first time. Yes. Bingo. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I, I, you know, even in spite of the fact I'm taking this medicine, I can conjure that one up, you know. Okay. Right. And and then, you, so you married the second one must have been, see, the thing is, the second one must have been somebody you knew for a long time. And all of a sudden, one day, yeah. you said, you know, you probably started fucking and went, you know. This is not a bad idea, right. and you got married, right? Right. Yeah. Right. The first one, uh, you got married because you fucked her. I don't know. You know. No, I, I married her because she was drop dead gorgeous. Mm hmm. Yeah. And actually, I, I felt a couple of pings of jealousy when she'd be talking to another guy. Really? I mean, she, yeah, she was just gorgeous. Yeah, well, you know, the trouble with that is is that one day you come to the realization that it doesn't matter how gorgeous they are, you know? Right. Uh, uh, and I had a girlfriend, and uh, one day we we were we had been fucking, and she was naked, and she got up and she walked across the room, and I said, that's the most perfect body I've ever had sex with in my life. Right, how do, right. And right. then I, the second thought was, how do I get out of this relationship? Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because there's the sex part that you probably get all welled up in. And then right. there's the emotional part where you go, you know, I'm thinking too much about the sex and not enough about the the uh, uh, what's happening. Relationship. Is, right. Yeah, in the relationship. And, and uh, I went, you know, I looked at her and I went, I just, you know, she was naked. She was beautiful. And I just said. I gotta get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's a, that's a you know that that's what happens. Let me ask you this question: I, I've just become an aldercocker. What? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, not yet. You got about uh, uh, two more years before you're an aldercocker. Is really? Yeah, that means old shitter, folks, in Yiddish. What? Yeah, yeah. I was unaware of that. Yeah, you got two more years. Right now, you're uh, pre Alta Caca. <laughs> That's funny. You old, That's you, funny. you hit sixty five. You start getting those checks from the government. You know, you start uh, right. you start getting the medical care from the government, and it's pretty fucking good, right? And right. Then, I, that's what I have. I have Medicare yeah. and Medicaid. Oh, oh, you you have Medicare early. I see. Okay. Uh, I got it. I got Medicare in two thousand and three. Why? Because you were sick enough to get it. My psychiatrist wrote a glowing recommendation. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Now, now you're are you still a member of SAG AFTRA? Yeah. Uh, when you hit sixty five, they have uh, well, they have benefits. You, well, you actually they have benefits you can use now for that secondary. Uh, really? Yes, and it is the best. Because what happened was we were after, and okay, we have whatever medicine we have, medical thing we have, then they combined with SAG, and SAG had the right. best medical plan in the industry. Right. You know, where, most, right. where most drug policies go out at, uh, oh, I don't know, two, uh, two thousand what $1,500, this one's $2,500. You know, wow. things like that. Dental, you know. That uh, pays for uh, up to fifteen, uh, no, twenty five hundred dollars worth of uh, dental. That was it. That's the one they give you. Really? Uh, the pharmacy is different, but it's so low it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm paying the same for three months worth of medicine that I used to pay for one. In fact, I'm paying less now, much less. I pay a dollar twenty five. That's my copay. Wow! But how much medicine are you taking? Uh, let me see. Crazy pills? No, anti-crazy pills. <laughs> anti-crazy um, pills? Yeah. Yeah, and, and thyroid medicine. Yeah. 
take some other crap. Well, I'm taking what you're. I, I, I'm taking what you're taking, but I don't take the anti crazy pills. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, that's because you're not crazy. Well, uh, I. You know, who says? You know. <laughs> you know, I love. To, I love. I love talking to you because you're so much fun. You're so much fun. Yeah. I. Just, I just hope you get back in the business. You know, and you get the, get what's coming to you. You know, because you're funny. Right. And, I, I, Hmm? You know, this year was was rough. This year was rough, and I'm hoping to reboot uh, uh, next year. Yeah, yeah. Well, we hope you do. You know, and let's yeah. do let's do this again in a couple of weeks. I'll write you, and we'll uh, we'll set it up, and we'll do it. Okay? Because I love talking to you. You're an old and dear, you. your old <laughs> dear friend, ladies and gentlemen. He's not playing anywhere, <laughs> <laughs> except to a husky. Uh, you know, but he may come to a club near you, so be prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Kravitz. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. Love you, man. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And let me see here. Let me go to me. Here, there we go. Okay, hi, how are you? What's happening? How you doing? Oh, wait a minute. i got to turn on the thing there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little out of sorts here because I was uh, doing some stuff while that break was going on. And uh, <clears throat> while that interview was going on, and I couldn't get something to work. And finally, I got it to work at the last moment. So, hmm. anyway. <laughs> Let me see here. Is, is that thing... Yeah, I guess I'm fine. Here, let me put this on. Uh, makes me feel more comfortable. Let me see here. Yeah, let's see if we get any callers tonight. I, I, this whole thing is kind of going sour, you know, the whole show and everything. Uh, so I, I just, I just do it now because uh, there are certain people that rely on it and enjoy it and. You know, whatever. So uh, let me see here. Let me just open up the uh, Skype line, and we should be okay here. All right. Okay. All right. So now we're uh, we're uh, up and running, and uh, it's up to you to start calling. Okay. Ah, my nose is itching. It's a crazy night tonight. Anyway, I got so I finally got something working. I'm, when I download stuff, I want it to go somewhere, but if it goes somewhere, eh, well, forget it, uh, you know. But it uh, It's all working okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man, this is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. Is somebody going to call here? Uh, because if nobody's going to call, I'm not going to do this. I, I don't need to do this. I have other things to do, other important things to do. So. I have nothing to talk about. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, as I say, I got, uh, I always decide that I'm going to do something and create a, uh, you know, try and make something work while something else is going on here. And then I get all upset because I can't get it working. So, that's it, you know. Okay, anyway. Am I going to just have to sign this whole thing off? Oh, here comes Phil. Here comes Phil. Uh, hello, Phil. How are you? Where is he? Let me see. I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, I hope. Oh, shit. I've got uh, something open that shouldn't be. Well, I have no idea. I'll close what it. it. Okay. Close it. Close it. Close there it. There we close go. It. Okay. All right. Let me see here. Okay. There we go. There goes Phil. There we go. We see Phil up there. Uh, I'm just out Did of you it. Blur your background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. No, I just did that. Uh, that's just on Skype. The, the people don't oh. see it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. So. Well, uh, greetings. I'm back. Yeah. Good. Good. Glad you're back. Glad. How was your trip to Maui? Uh, too short, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was uh, 87 degrees there. Mm -hmm. uh, most days, yeah, no rain, 
it was uh, it was very pleasant. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. I uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, I like Maui. It, you it's really different. Do? I, I yeah. I, I hate Hawaii. I just well, hate Hawaii. Well, the each island has a different feel. Uh, I uh, assume that you were in Honolulu or no. Oahu. No. 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 Where were you? I was in um, uh, Kauai. Kauai, is there anything to do there? No. Yeah, that's what I I thought. mean, except except to sit in a hotel and listen to ukuleles. Yeah, if you're a honeymooner, uh, they that's where you go. You know, uh, I actually have never been to that island. Yeah. Uh, but a, I understand it's called the Garden Island, and yeah. it, there's nothing to do. And that's one one where they filmed Indiana Jones. Yeah. And then uh, they had to... Um, they had to close down production because it was the largest hurricane ever, and it leveled all the vegetation on the island. So somehow they had to go somewhere to finish the scenes. Yeah, that looked like it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, Maui is—it's um, sort of a, uh, a cross between uh, Oahu and uh, a more agrarian uh, place. Mm -hmm. And you know, the sunsets are beautiful. Uh, it's just. It's just gorgeous there. Wow. Wow. Well, cool. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad you had And there's, there's stuff to do, places to go. I gained weight. Yeah. Uh, you know, and now riding on the goddamn plane, I got a cold. Uh, coming home, I started sneezing. Yeah. And uh, today I'm, uh, I don't feel quite as, quite as good. And then I think I pulled my back out. So I've got the uh, only one 800 milligram ibuprofen left. What, but, is that the 800s? Yeah, they're the best. Yeah. We have we have a supply of those forever. Yeah, yeah. I have one. So uh, uh, there was 16 in here. So I must have gone through them uh, over in over fact, time. Right over here, just sitting over here in case I ever need it. There we go. Oh, very there nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In yeah. fact, here's another one too. I had like a couple of them sitting here. Oh, okay. That's you got a stash of ibuprofen. Oh, I we have bottles of them. Yeah, of the eight hundreds. Well, yeah, I just wrote my doctor and said, "Hey, I need some." Yeah, well, who needs the fucking like two uh, hundreds? They sell at the store. That's you know that's uh, that's sissy ibuprofen. Well, doesn't it upset your stomach? No, it's you not your stomach that it upsets. It's huh? your kidneys that it plays hell with. Oh, I see. Now, how do you think I got the kidney stone? Oh, okay, but not from the eight hundreds. Yeah. Them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And they told me uh, don't don't do ibuprofen. So I said, "Fuck you," and I still do ibuprofen. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, so uh, I I got a chance to uh, to listen on the plane uh, to your show last night just uh -huh. for a few minutes before yeah. I lost internet connection. Yeah. And uh, you know. Uh, it was it was nice. You had what three people? Yeah, it was it was dull. This is getting this, this, nobody's calling this show anymore. I'm about ready to just pack it in. Well, I think you got the usual suspects, but uh, no. But I'm thinking you know, of packing it in because I'm just look it's you and me at this point. Yeah. You know, I mean, it used That's, to be by this time I used to fill up. No, you know, and and I think maybe everybody's just too used to it. Maybe it's time for me to just you know, uh, yeah. stop doing it. You know. Well, one night a week, uh, you used to do the video, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you'd get the ten people, mm -hmm. bit of bomb, bit of boom, and uh, yeah. you know now you're you're right. It's uh, you know they can call any day. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, you know I know you don't want the show to have any less integrity uh, by not having video on some nights. So uh, maybe you need a life and, you know, you need a little bit more free time. Well, I mean, and, you know, you know there's, no reason, week. there's no reason for me not to do the video since I'm doing the video anyway, whether I just do the audio or not. Somehow Bree called and he didn't uh, hook. Oh, there he is now. There. Oh. There we go. Uh, turn yourself the other way, will you, Bree? Because I don't like. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. There we go. OK. Let me see here. Now let me put you. Um, and you're you're also in um, silhouette, Bree. Yeah, because you're very, very dark, Bree. Uh, well, no, there's a window behind him. Yeah, and then we don't have any audio on you, Bree. Are you there? I think he's frozen. Are you there, Bree? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm switching over to the 4G because my Wi-Fi is not uh, responding. Yeah, yeah. Are you able to see me or hear me? Yeah, we can see you now. You can, you know, if you oh. it, the trouble is that you've got a light in back of you, and so it's making you dark. Let's see. Yeah. Well, I'm going to lunch, so. Uh, yeah. Oh. I oh. may lose you in the in the lift, but it'll it'll pick up. Or I could take the stairs, I suppose. Yeah, you could take the stairs. It's healthier anyway. Yeah. Uh, I, I was reading on the on the. On the plane, Kuala Lumpur was like one of the ten best places to live uh, in the world. Yeah. Yeah, they just came out with a Forbes uh, yeah, study. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they said uh, Taipei was number came in number one on that, yeah. and uh, KL two. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to take the, the stairs down nine floors here, ten floors. Hello. Hello. Salam and Pagi. Hi. Talks like a native. <laughs> well, you know, you do learn how to say hello and goodbye no matter where you are. Uh-oh, yeah. we're losing you anyway. We're, we're losing you anyway. <laughs> so stop complaining of people calling. Alex, I, you know, I've told you before, I would just tune in if it were just you talking. My favorite times are when you don't have a guest, actually. Yeah, Yeah. well, yeah. you know, I mean, I, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, but he's the straight man, so he needs he needs somebody to bounce it off of. It'd just be nice if one of us had some talent. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, look at what a big, big metropolitan city Kuala Lumpur is. Look out that window. Yeah, that's a, a jealousy window. Uh, yeah. A what? They call those a jealousy window, Those uh, the way those open. Uh, uh -huh. It's the style of window that it is. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I'm just tired tonight. I mean, I, I this whole thing that I did before I went on the air, and I was trying to get something working, and yeah. it, I got I was up about to the last moment, and I finally got it working. So, oh, well, it's usually the you know, it's kind of the curse, mm -hmm. you know. You, you try to do something. I I walked in at seven o'clock my time, and I just realized that I had shut down every bit of computer equipment in the room, so. Uh, I had to turn everything on. I imported my pictures from yeah. uh, from the dives, and uh, they're all right. Nothing, nothing to write home about. Yeah, yeah. You know, I carried a lot of equipment for some shitty pictures. Wow. You know? Yeah. And then uh, I took a picture of somebody on the dive and told them that I'd send it to them, and now I can't find it. I only took three hundred pictures, but on three three days of diving. But uh, I can't find it. Hmm. I know it's in there. Wow. Uh, it's after I, uh, there was one shark, uh, this four foot shark, kind of like me, just kept coming around, circling, coming back. I got some good shots on that one, and I'm pretty sure it was the dive right after that that I took this person's picture. But Yeah. Yeah. So, well, no, that's nice. Yeah. It's nice. The reason he probably kept circling is he was trying to figure out if you were worth eating or not. <laughs> you know. Yeah, most you know sharks are not normally aggressive. You know they're they're just especially the divers, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they're fun. I mean, I'm not going to stick my hand the in the bald eagle and the, the octopus. Oh, you mean a uh, octopus and a, um, a eel, more eel? No, uh, bald eagle. Uh, no, I had. Is this a joke? I hadn't heard about that. No. Uh, you can Google it. It was in Canada. It was yeah. an octopus that caught on a uh, 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 Bree, you're break, breaking up on us. Why don't you call us back when uh, you get when, when you get downstairs, okay? Yeah, we'll watch you eat lunch. Yeah, because <laughs> you're really breaking up on us a lot. So, yeah, so he, he just there, froze again. In fact, he froze. So, you know, yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> Oh, it's back. Right, here we go. Uh, uh, Bree, right. Bree, you keep breaking up yeah. on us, and I think it would just be better if you hung up until you got down to some place where you have a good signal, okay? Okay. Okay? All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Let me see here. There we go. We lost him. Okay? Yeah. 
And uh, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, let me get rid of his picture so, there. So uh, did they tell you uh, how long it's going to be until the judge renders a decision? Yeah, then you didn't listen to the whole show. Well, I, well, I told you I could listen to some of it until I lost internet you could, connection. You, well, you probably could only you didn't hear the beginning. Because in yeah. the beginning, uh, uh, I told you to everybody that uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it had been postponed I, I, again. I, I heard the part that if you didn't, uh, maybe he's got a better signal. It had been postponed again. Uh, oh boy, it's just too noisy, Bree. It's too noisy. Yeah. It's too noisy, it's too noisy. and uh, yeah. you're you're like uh, yeah yeah. It's too really right. much. Okay, too- he muted. Huh? Uh, he muted. Now we get to see the ride on the elevator, oh, the glass okay. roof above him. Okay. You, know. Uh, you know, there's some action going on. Now, I, I heard parts. I heard you say that, you know, tell people about it. And uh, but I I think you're going back uh, for four days. Is that what it Something is? Something like four days. Yeah. I'm sick of this. I'm just sick yeah. of it. I'm absolutely fucking sick of it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm tired of of uh, of all this. Uh, you know, when a judge goes, oh, well, we have to postpone this until January. Yeah. Fucking postpone it to January and then make it another four days. Great. Get the bill going. Get the legal bills. Just really j- jack it up there. You know, yeah, Bree had his hand up. Yes, Bree. Did I unmute myself? Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah, but you've got a lot of uh, wind noise. A lot of wind noise. Well, Alex, okay, I, you know, I, I don't, when is it that we lost common sense? Uh, because I, I could figure this out. It wouldn't take me very long. And what you have to do is you kind of have to take the, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, the, the immediate landlord, the guy you are calling the prick. Yeah. He's, he's somewhat irrational, and that makes it hard, you know, to make the decision. But here's my question to you. How much was he paying in rent? And then how much was he renting it to you? He was paying $2,400 a month in rent, and he was renting it to us for 4200 Okay. So the, the deal is 2400 Yeah. So, yeah. So... What I would say is, okay, uh, your rent is twenty four hundred, mm-hmm. and this guy who was essentially subletting it, mm-hmm. uh, he he gets nothing because it's not his apartment. So whatever you paid, I would calculate that. No, no, it, 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 there's a whole there's, Bree. There's a whole law here in play. And what he did, he couldn't do, okay? So he owes us the difference between what he was paying and what we were paying. Plus, there's That's a chance of treble damages. Uh, but the, 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 the um, judge just wanted us to settle for uh, taking the, getting, the rent, the, getting the lease on the apartment and paying twenty two fifty a month rent, Okay. Right. So and 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 beyond that, beyond beyond time. that, nothing. Well, now that this thing is going on further, and is going to a court trial, I don't, I don't, I'm not going for any settlement. I want my fucking uh, right. uh, I, uh, 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 legal fees taken care of. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't get the finish. What? I, the, the thing is, is yeah. I would take him out of if I'm the judge. Yeah. I say, sir, you were, you're not allowed to do this. You were never allowed to do this. Uh, boy, there, there was so much wind noise. There was so much wind noise, we can't even hear you, Bree. All right, let me put this under here. Yeah, okay. I, I would have said to him, I'll put it under my shirt, and I yeah. should protect the wind. Yeah. I, I would have said to, uh, pers- I, I don't want to call him the prick, uh, Landlord A. Yeah. Okay, the landlord A. I would, if I'm the judge, I'd say, hey, you, you have no right to do this. You're completely in the wrong. Any monies that you collected whatsoever, mm-hmm. those are going to be turned over to uh, land landlord company, the 
you know, the main people who have the place. Yeah. So whatever that amount was, that's what you owe them right now. Yeah. And then I would turn to you and I'd say, whatever you've paid to him, to, to landlord A, we might, we're going to subtract that off of everything that goes to the landlord company. And you, and from this point on, you can start paying, you know, twenty two hundred, whatever the deal was. Yeah, but it's it's and a much, it, it, if, uh, Bree, it's a much more complicated and convoluted situation than that, because uh, it doesn't have to be. What? Well, I mean, no, but, but it does. But fit, but it does have to be because the landlord, in many ways, cheated this guy. Okay, so that element comes into it. So there are three parties here. Of which we are probably the most innocent of the bunch, you know? Well, I worked with a band called The Floors, and they had a song. One of the lyrics I remember, and it was when they were doing a deal with MCA Records, and the line was, the only one making out here are the lawyers. Well, that's true. That's damn true. As as I sat there during this, what was a six-hour session in court while they while the judge tried to negotiate some kind of non-trial settlement. Uh, you had three lawyers sitting there, and as I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, right sitting right there is like fourteen hundred dollars an hour. Okay? And and I, you know, of course the only people that get rich are the lawyers, that's for damn sure. That's true. Yeah, you know. I should have been a lawyer instead of a kid. You should have been a lawyer. I, I should have been a lawyer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, what happened with court? Did it go all right? What? How was the? You went to court today? No, not today. Oh. You weren't perfect. listening yesterday. Yeah, I was. What happened? <laughs> Apparently, you weren't listening yesterday. I didn't hear the beginning though. Well, you see, that's where I told the whole story, and as a penalty oh. to people like you, I'm not telling it again. Okay, I listened to the replay. Yeah, I was, I was taking care of the patient. Go back and listen to the replay. I'll listen to the replay. Show. I have the replay. Yeah, that has the whole, the whole okay. story of what went on. But I am just sick of it because you know, I mean, if we just settle, uh, we don't get our legal fees, and if we don't get our legal fees, Marjorie owes that money to the bank. Okay. And it's just, it, it's just, uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm so sick of this whole goddamn thing. I'm ready to just say, fuck it, take your goddamn apartment, we're leaving. You know? I'm just so yeah, sick the, of it. There's only one way to lose is, is if you quit. I mean, you're, you're in it this far. You know? yeah, yeah, but all we were just... trying to do was protect ourselves, you know? And Although, now, we're, now we're into it for $68,000. Oh, my God. That's how much we've put out. Now, we've been using a uh, home equity loan that Marjorie has to pay it, and we've paid off all but about 15000 of it. But there's going to be another 30000 30000 before this thing's over with. And we're not going to recover any of that. Well, well you might. I mean, you if, know, you, if you prevail. That's where my solution came in. That's where my solution came in. No, well, but your you solution know. doesn't matter. The only solution is the one the judge comes up with. And whether you know, feel that this is what you, you... You're not my judge. I wish you were, you know, but you're not. I would, I would just take out a big sheet of paper, and I would just draw it. I would, it it I helped me it. think about yes. who has paid whom to what and how much. And, and actually... But it's not, as simple, it's not as simple as you think because there are three parties involved here, and each party is suing the other, except uh, only one person is suing us, and that's the guy who rented us the apartment. Now, this this couldn't be considered fraud. The guy that rented you the par- apartment uh, posing as the true landlord where he was really subletting, uh, even though he was doing a, what they call, you called a usury tenancy, uh, usury tenancy. No, uh, it's, uh, it's he, illusory tenancy. Illusory tenancy. Illusory tenancy. Uh, it's an ten- illusion. Yeah. yeah. No, well, he, uh, you know, uh, but he posed as a landlord saying that it was his apartment to yeah, rent. Yeah, so, so we, get, so we uh, charge him with fraud. How does that get us our fucking money? Oh, How does it get us the fucking thing. apartment? I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter what we, yeah, yeah, we'll go to the cops and turn you in for fraud. What? You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. So no you got to win the case. Then, well, I mean, uh, here here's what they what they do with us is they say mm -hmm. uh, we say well. You know, we've been paying all these lawyers' fees and everything, and they go, "Yeah, but you've been living there for free for five years." And we and I like to say to them, "That doesn't fucking count." You yeah, know, just you because just because rich. nobody was willing to settle is not my fault. You know, can yeah. you That's pay right. rent, Alex? Or you weren't allowed to. Who do I pay rent to? Yeah, that's true. You can't even like give it to the landlord. Yeah, you I can. Like to, you could put it in an escrow. Account. No, I did. My lawyer said I don't have to do that. <laughs> he didn't have an agreement with the. I landlord. didn't have an agreement with anybody. He, yeah, was, so he's, he's a has, squatter. Uh, he's a, we have he's a, a company squatter. here. There's a company here in Malaysia where they uh, act as a arbiter in these situations. Yeah, but it's that's in, Malaysia. That's not New York I, I know, City. But I'm just saying that we, <laughs> yeah. you start. You can put your money with them, and they only pay it. It's uh, it's it's used a lot for e-commerce. Listen, listen, listen. I talked to the uh, I talked to the uh, landlords there, and they don't expect that I'm culpable for the money, for the rent. You're not suing the landlords. Well, no, and they're the, not the, suing they, you. They feel that I am not responsible for the rent over these years, that this guy is. Yeah. Because so he's what I he's, don't understand is then how can he sit there and say. I'm only going to get out of this for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That that I, he, came, he, came, that he came he came he came he came into it he came into it he came into it saying that he uh, only he wanted three hundred thousand dollars and then uh, when we got into the whole negotiations he raised it to three fifty. That's because his, his and his lawyer even logic. gave him a funny look. What's the logic? I know. That? There's no uh, logic. The That's logic is you come down, mm -hmm. you don't go up, especially yeah, when you're not in the catbird seat. You he's know. He's got more expenses. That's probably why he raised it. You know, you you spent sixty eight thousand, he's probably spent at least fifty. And uh so you think they're... he's doing this with a bunch of places? No. No, well, no, 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 no. This is it. Then he doesn't have the money. That's a possibility, but he's also thinking that the longer he stretches it out, maybe, maybe uh, the plaintiffs he, he, will pass he, away. He, he, half the a, uh, uh, company. Uh, I would say half the money that we owe, the half the money that we put out, okay, mm. went to this n absolute crazy uh, uh, thing that he did where he went to the to a judge and said i want a uh, i can't remember what it's called now where you say the preponderance of summary the, judgment summary judgment and just by saying that we now had to file my my lawyer wrote up a piece of paper that cost us fifth uh, twelve thousand dollars just for fucking these lawyers would have done it no but i i mean i got to admit he, it's a beautiful piece of paper i mean he really well, laid out the case the he laid out the case so uh, the plan was Wait, to try you know the plan was to try it's like uh, poker the the plan, he doesn't have a good he's not holding the the right cards but he's hoping that you won't want to risk so much of your loot that you'll fold that's essentially what it sounds like to me. Well, at this what? point, at this, at this point, we're we're. So who do you think you well, well, no, at, at this point, I mean, you know, I mean, we're we're gonna, we can prevail in this thing, but when we prevail, we still lose, you know. Yeah. Right. yeah. Th then you got to get the money from. Him. But you said you did this. Yeah. No, but there's no money that. to get from him if we settle. If we were to settle, right. what the well, what settle, the, it's uh, it's done. Yeah, but since this is going to trial, well. Now maybe we can get some some something back here, you know. And, I want the. Is the anybody happy? I'm not eating at the sushi restaurant today. Why? Well, I'm not. Uh, I, I'd be happy if you ate at the sushi Mexican. restaurant. You know. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. No, Alex. I I think that uh, you'll come out ahead, but it'll take a long time. Oh. And I, I don't know why you're tired of it. Gosh, if I were in your shoes, I would be smiling. You know, every day I'm not paying well, the rent. Well, I, I was very rent. happy when the when the landlord said to me, he said, you know, you, you're not responsible for it. This guy is responsible for the rent. He's still, you know, technically the person who the apartment is is being rented by. And if he yeah. wants to come back in, 
He's got to pay all that back rent. You know, it's much. It's better for him to just fucking settle because it's going to cost him more to win. Well, how can mm-hmm. he come back in if you're living there? Doesn't uh, wouldn't he have to? Uh, oh, if he prevails, then and gets let's the say place. let's say the judge gets wacky, okay, mm-hmm. and he gives him back his apartment. Oh, wow. He then still owes us all that money. Plus so the treble, plus the treble, treble damages, damage. plus the lawyer's fees. Yeah. If the judge says he's entitled to the apartment, yeah. Hey, you know is, he's not he going to settle for that. He's not going to be able to come up with that money. Yeah. I mean, five years of rent. That's so. It, it, does he really want to win? He could have just walked away for like fifty thousand, seventy-five thousand. I think the <clears throat> landlord would have been happy to pay that just to get rid of him. Yeah. Okay. Alex, who's going to pay your legal fees? Well, yeah. if it, if it was the kind of settlement the judge wanted the other day, us. Oh fuck that! You better tell the judge. You better change that. Too. Oh yeah, I'm going to tell well, the judge. He, he better do thinking, something. Really? He thinks, he's the he's judge is thinking, how much would you have paid in rent? How much would you have well, to Well, I know. That's what they All say. Right, well, the lawyer's that, fees are less than that. That's what they say. But, can you count but wait it? a minute. But wait a minute. Hold on a second, Bree. The that's what they say. But I also went through five years of absolute fucking misery. Yeah, okay? And went through a, a feeling of impermanence. I told this to the judge. I went through a feeling of impermanence and everything else. You know, and I, I expect that I should have some kind of compensation for that. And saying that I simply uh, got an apartment for free, I didn't want that apartment for free. I was willing to pay for it. It's just nobody was saying, okay, we'll rent it to you. All right? So, I mean, uh, don't give me, you know, I, I just feel that's a bunch of crap when they say, well, you know, you got to live there for nothing all these years. Well, so fucking what? Yeah, but the judge is just trying to make it go away. And so he yeah. took a oh, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to make it go away. You know, and it's just it's just insane. It's just insane. Uh, and uh, I, take me back. How did you find out about that? Like, you're paying your rent to this guy for how long? How long did you pay 4200 For about uh, 32 months. Wow. So almost three years. Yeah. yeah. And then... What happened that you somehow then knew he wasn't the real landlord? What what told you that? Well, uh, I I knew that he wasn't at, at very early on. He got he was told you he, you got a notice to move from the guy, right? Well, no, no, from the landlord. Oh, yeah, but no, that that was later on. But early on, uh, I was talking with him. This was about two months in, and I said, boy, you really own a nice apartment house here. He says, oh, I don't own the apartment house, which we had assumed. Mm-hmm. I said, well, you own the apartment. <clears throat> he said, no, I don't own the apartment. I rent it. He said, this is a sublet. We said, oh, and then I thought to myself, oh, oh really, this is a sublet? You didn't sell it to me that way. <clears throat> You signed yeah. a lease. You didn't sign a sublet. Yeah, the lease said landlord, you, t- you said. Yeah, he signed it as landlord. I see. You know, so, I mean, um, we, you were at defrauded. That, at, yeah, but at that point, am I going to say, well, then we're moving out? We just hey, would spend $30,000 to move in, you know, with all the moving expenses and everything else. So. Sure. We weren't about ready to just move out at that point, so I figured, then we'll just live with it for the time being. Well, then this whole problem happened where the landlord suddenly decided that that he should get us out, and that if he didn't get us out, they were going to let him out. They're going to they were going to uh, evict him. Evict him, and uh, so he asked us to leave. At which point, we I said, no, we're not going anywhere, and we went and lawyered up, you know, and we were off to the races. Yeah. On that never-ending um, um, treadmill to oblivion. Well, you might only have four more days to pay for, uh, plus, uh, you know, when they write the, uh, if you win, then they're going to write some uh, document that uh, uh, 
does what it has well, to do. Well, the and landlord, then... the landlord, doesn't mind giving us a lease. Right. Okay, they well, like us, as a matter of fact. You know, uh, and they and they, how did they determine the twenty two or twenty four hundred dollars a month is the value uh, to offer you? I don't have a fucking clue. All right. Uh, didn't didn't you say that your lawyer thought this was that this you was be this was a, a this was an amount the judge came up with? Yeah, but how can he come up with it contrary to uh, the rules of? Uh, uh, you said it's a special kind of uh, rental uh, because um, there's there's the rental where they live in it since 1935, and then there's the there are two kinds of rentals. Uh, right. The old ones hardly exist any longer. Though that's called rent controlled. <laughs> Right. That goes back to the 30s. Right. And, and when you uh, had the other one. We had rent stabilized. That's right. what this is. Yeah. So since it's a rent stabilized apartment, you were under the impression you might be paying $1,000 a month. Well, it can be legally proven this apartment should be paid, it should only cost about $1,000 a month at this point yeah. because of one thing and another. Um, we we somehow I guess can't get the judge to understand that, but we also haven't gone to trial where we lay out the law for him, you yeah. know. Uh, so anyway, it's just I don't know. I'm I'm I don't know if I even want to talk about this anymore. Yeah, you know, you know I I understand. You know, people. Uh, I have a situation where I bought a pallet of material, started to install it, and the material was defective. So I sent it back, and the very next day they got me another pallet. But it turns out it was from the same lot, and it had the same defect. So I had to have all, <laughs> you know, 11, 1,200 feet of material brought back to my store, uh, have the customers reselect, yeah. purchase a more expensive material, but not charge the customer for this more expensive material. It's not their fault that the mm -hmm. stuff was defective. And now uh, the... Uh, they didn't give me full credit for the two pallets, yeah. and they're not paying the extra labor that I had to incur. Uh, I, I don't it. wish to be rude, but what the fuck does this have to do with me? In California, there's a law, I think it's called the Robinson-Pacman Act, which mm -hmm. says that if they deliver defective material, a, a manufacturer or mm -hmm. a supplier, that they've got to pay you retail value in the labor. Well, they don't want to pay me anything. And so I said, hey... This is the Robinson-Pacman Act. You owe me retail labor. I'm not even asking for that. I'm just asking for my cost. And, uh, you know, if consider this a demand that will go to small claims court, and uh, I'll recover, you yeah. know, whether your thing is I don't want to pay it, you know. Yeah. You can't. It's the law. And right. Just like with your apartment, it's the law mm -hmm. you have, you know, and mm -hmm. once the judge understands that, mm -hmm. uh, I'm Sure, he's not going to go contrary to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bree is up. Yeah, Bree. Yes. Yeah. Bree. Um, well, I, I, you guys remember you were following uh, when I moved here. Yeah. The movers broke a couple things, and I was <clears throat> waiting. And the insurance company, or I don't know, some intermediary guy between mm -hmm. the adjuster or the I don't even know. But anyway, he was the one negotiating with me. And for the longest time, he only wanted to pay to repair the, uh, the bench, the teakwood bench that they broke. Uh, and the repair cost was pretty cheap here. But I argued with him. I said, even if you <clears throat> pay the repair, this is not an expert repair guy. This is just the only guy I could find after trying for two months to get someone. And he seems competent, and I think he'll he'll bring it back. I said, but it will never be 100%. The, mm -hmm. There's value that was lost because they broke it. Mm -hmm. I said, you've got to give me some of that value back, or I can't, I won't sign anything, you know. And it went on like that for a while, but eventually, they doubled the the amount that they were going to pay, which was still small, but it covers about half of what I think the the piece of furniture is worth. Yeah. So I accepted it just to be done with it because I don't want to go another round with them. But the lesson I learned was that I had to figure out how they make decisions. And I have to play to that. Not really the reality of the situation, but which is what I did. 
but rather, so I, I should have found the most expensive repair guy that I could have found, mm -hmm. not just the guy that I could find and then give them that. But I had so many other things on my plate that I didn't think about that. You know, yeah, it's what you, so what's I, your time worth? I mean, even the bench, what's it worth? Five hundred dollars? You know, uh, uh, seven fifty. Seven fifty. I mean, uh, that that in some cases is uh, less than a day's pay. You know, uh, is, is it worth you know spending hours on it? Right. To... Now, I'm the kind of person where I want I want things to be as correct and right as they can be, commonsensically. Uh, you know, but I realize, and I've heard so many instances of where people try to enforce common sense, and they end up paying five times as much if they would have just settled in the first place. You know, yeah. there's so many instances of that where somebody you know gets a thorn in their side and they just decide to pursue it mm -hmm. come hell or high water and they end up paying you know triple what it would have been if they would have just settled in the first place i know we've all heard those cases so yeah 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 for oh. me I, I thought well they're offer what they're offering was so low it was less than the okay the, this uh, is this is I, I tell you this is really boring programming because this is like getting to be just like all personal. Here's my thing, and here's right. my thing, and you know I got problems with a palate of this, and you know I've got Trump, and it, and, Trump, and, to, Trump. and to the I, audience I, in general, it doesn't mean shit. Okay. Yeah. So so anybody in the audience has never had this issue happen. I'm sure they have. No, I'm sure they have. But what I'm saying is because we're all personalizing our situation, it makes it rather dull for the audience out there. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? For you and I talking, it's interesting. It's like, you know, what we would talk about if, if we were sitting down having a cup of coffee somewhere and you were grousing about some situation you right. had. But we're not doing that. We're talking to a whole audience out there who'd like to have some kind of entertaining discourse. <laughs> okay, you know? well, my then the, the advice is uh, just uh, don't buy insurance. <laughs> Don't buy insurance, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it comes yeah. down to. Hi, okay. boiling. Hi, Kevin. Santa's here. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. How are you? How you doing? All right. How are you? Yeah, I'm. I'm doing okay. You know. The bastards still haven't voted yet. What? Oh, they haven't oh, voted you mean, yet. Uh, the uh, Congress. They're still bitching back and forth. It's hilarious. You know, I'm so tired of the partisanship. I, I am too, but you know, I just turned it on. I've been watching hockey, and then you know, it's kind it of over. like it's kind of like a movie that you know exactly how it's going to turn out. You know, yeah, you know how like everybody's going to how how every player is saying the same shit back and forth all yeah. day long. Yeah. I mean, I would like to hear one Republican say, you know something, I think Trump is utterly wrong, and I would like to hear some Democrats say, you know, I think that uh, he's uh, Trump is incredibly be. right. You know, yeah, I'd just like to hear one. Meant that it's not partisan. <laughs> but it is partisan. You're not going to hear that. Did we lose Bree? Um, no, nah, maybe he's doing the same thing with I his background. he just has a little uh, <laughs> hmm? Wi-Fi malfunction or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Unless, unless maybe he doesn't want to talk anymore because we're not talking about his situation, but you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, there he, is. there he is. There we go. There we go. There's there's Bree. Uh, when he when he walks, he loses it sometimes. That's what would happen with most people. It happens with Ray when he's driving. You know, and he yeah, hits yeah, a, yeah. he hits a dead zone. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I'm just I'm I'm so tired of of just the partisanship. And the fact that, hey, you know, there's got to be one Republican who quietly thinks that Trump's full of shit, and there's got to be a Democrat who quietly thinks Trump's okay. Well, you I know? don't know. Maybe they're all we'll trying see. to brainwash each other because I sit there sometimes, and for a while I'll start going, you know, because I'm an independent, so I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence, and I'll sit there and go, hey, you know what? That Republican's kind of right. Maybe I should just... <laughs> and then I go back and... Uh, Oh, that Democrat's kind of right, you know. You know when you're gonna, you know when you're gonna That's when I'm really getting fucking tired. <laughs> when it goes to the vote, the the final vote uh, in the House, that's where you might see some people go uh, one way or the other. Well, that's gonna but, be whoever's awake. Well, uh, yeah, uh, but the, the, you know, 
some people are just going to say, hey, it's safe uh, to uh, vote one way or another uh, because once it goes to the Senate, they're not going to convict them. No, you know. Yeah, you're but, probably right uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why it's it's going this way. Plus, from what I've heard, uh, Trump's numbers are improving. It's really at 50-50 right now. Uh, where, where do uh, you hear that, Phil? I, I heard it on the radio. 41. Which radio? <laughs> well, why, why is everything that comes out of Fox always inaccurate or wrong? Because it's always maybe inaccurate it's, and wrong. Maybe it's the truth. <laughs> you know? Maybe it's the other ones are fake. There are several different pollsters that you can look at. Uh -huh. Oh, wait a minute. We just lost, uh, we just lost him completely. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, he's well, coming it's, back. It's one of the ten best places to live in the world, but the internet may be The internet shit. sucks, yeah. It's, it, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. We got him back again. Um, yeah. We were saying uh, it's one of the ten best places in the world to live, Bree, but it's one of the ten worst places for internet service. <laughs> yeah. It's just my system here. Uh -huh. I, yeah. I, the way, I'm moving to different devices so that I don't have to spend so much on data. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, all I'm saying is, is that, uh, you know, depending on where you go, they, they you know, if, if you want to use certain polls, uh, Trump's going to come out better than other in other polls, uh, because there are some polls that are, in fact, Republican polls, you know. And uh, 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 what I've heard is his approval rating has remained about the same as it always has, which is somewhere hovering between 35 oh, this, and 40 percent. This wasn't approval. This was for people that wanted to impeach and remove uh, were now at 50 percent. So impeach and remove was actually higher than 50 percent, uh, uh, and it has it has gone to almost parity. So what's happening is, is those polls, but it's not for popularity or it's not for approval. It was those who want to impeach and remove have dropped since uh, uh, the Nadler thing, and and also uh, who's the who's the one in the Senate that they just brought out? Uh, they marched him out um, for, uh, with a re another report, the IG um, uh, Horowitz, uh, and he was actually very impressive. Uh, you know, he stuck to the thing. He's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. uh, did you watch any of the Horowitz things uh, in the Senate? For a few moments, yeah, no. I just I'm just so tired like and bored with the. Paint dry. The, yeah, it's like watching paint dry. Exactly. My Senate well, yeah, well, exactly. You know, the whole thing is, uh, you know, I, I listened to it in the car a little bit, and uh, you know, one. I, uh, what I think is going to happen here, and I don't know how it's going to affect the election, but I think we're hitting a point of impeachment fatigue. Yeah. You know, in which we're all kind of like tired of this shit. And, and, yeah. and I guess we're tired of the partisanship. You know, yeah. uh, I happen to think Trump is wrong. OK, I, you know, be that as it may. Uh, the partisanship is what's getting to me. And I just I just wish everybody could start. I mean, I think, to be honest with you, Phil, and let's not get into a big argument on this. I think there's every reason to impeach the guy. I think he's done highly impeachable offenses, okay? I think that if we don't go and impeach him and we let him get away with it, then that's a sign to every other president after him that this kind of behavior will be tolerated. Uh, and, and, and so we do this as a, as a punitive measure because he's never going to be relieved from office. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, uh, Bree. Bree. Yeah, I mean... Let's face facts, and that is that you could find, find something on anybody if you watch them close enough all the time. Now, has Trump done things? Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure that he has. So, okay. So our system has to say, you've done something wrong. We all think here in the, you know, among us that you've done something wrong. We impeach you. But I think you're sounding like a sanction say, guy. Well, no, to well, let Nothing him finish. Will happen. So, yeah, it's it's like a mark to say, look, there's stuff going on. We don't think it's right. You know, we're telling you about this. We're, we're going to hold everybody to a high standard. We realize this is not going to send you from office. So why are they spending so much time on this? Just 
uh, in the House, just vote, vote, do all the votes. And okay, the House has said that the president is going to be impeached. Okay, Senate, what do you guys say? No, we're not voting on that. Or if we did, there's not enough votes. So mm -hmm. it's done. Okay, yeah, yeah. so now we put a little impeachment mark next to his name. Let's move on. But no, they have to keep going on and on because it's all politics. And this is what everybody hates about it. I hate it. Did Trump do questionable activities? Probably, yeah, I don't know. Sure, okay. So does it impeached. rise to the level of impeachment? Yes, though? it does, it does. I don't think It so. depends on who you ask. And some yes, some no. So the majority in the House say yes. Okay, great, done, finished. Senate, what do you guys think? No, we don't have the votes? Okay. So, I, you know, then it, we move on from there. Uh, if, if the House impeaches him and the Senate does not, does he still get impeached? Does he get that? Yes. that yes. Oh, he's still impeached. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's been impeached, impeached. But not convicted. Okay. So in my mind, Trump has impeachment next to his name. In fact, in well. fact, in fact, now let's, Brie, let's Brie, move on. Brie, move on. Brie, in fact, yeah. All the other impeachments that have taken place in the history of this country, of which there are only two others, um, uh, none of them found the person guilty in the Senate, okay? But they were all impeached. Johnson went down as, when I was growing up, as the only president that was ever impeached. And then Clinton became the second president who was ever impeached, and now and the, Trump will become the third person who The Johnson that okay. got impeached now, was in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. What I want to know is what is happening in the White House while this <clears throat> impeachment hearings are going on. Because I can guarantee you that one of Trump's great things is he likes to throw something and talk and get everybody talk, everybody talks, talk, and he'll do 20,000 other things. And then when you come and say, oh, is there something else? Oh, impeachment is really bad. Impeach We're talking about impeachment. It's really bad. And the, there's his, five thousand other things. I guarantee you. I, I'll tell you what one of them is, Bree. Uh, he just appointed his fiftieth appellate court judge, uh, and uh, to the to the and he's appointed ten to the Ninth Circuit. So the Ninth Circuit, which was a very liberal uh, court and was being used by liberals to stop. Uh, 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 things that Trump would uh, initiate. Uh, now it's starting. There was 13 Republicans on it, as it, as it was, but it's starting to lean more uh, to uh, Trump-appointed judges, which I feel will be judges that will look at the law and not at. Uh, no, they will not look at the law, Phil. They well, will look at. They say. will look at what's best for Trump. Is what they that's will look at, say. Phil. No, wait a minute. That's what they will do. It's not like they're going to be any better than the guys before them who didn't have an agenda. Well, now, no. You, uh, what you're saying is it's okay. To, to, it's okay to have judges on the bench no, who who have an agenda. Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. I, who have an agenda. But but as long but if the agenda is what you believe in, that's okay. See, I don't believe it's an agenda. But getting back to what Bree was saying, uh, he was saying that he thought it was a smokescreen, and he must be doing something else now because mm. he's appointed fifty appellate court judges. Uh, in Obama's eight years, he's only he, Obama appointed fifty five judges. So Trump is very very close. You know, ninety percent. Uh, within three years of the amount of judges that were appointed by Obama. So getting back to Bree's statement, you know, what, what is he doing? Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's appointing judges. Yeah, he's stacking and, the and deck so that he can it, he's stacking the deck so he can steal the farm. <laughs> no, so that the liberals can't. No, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what the problem was, Phil. I'll tell you vote. what the whole problem is here with Trump. We should have never you know, people say, well, let's, uh, you know, he's a billionaire. He's uncorruptible. No, he's not. The fact is he's a, he's, a, he's a failed billionaire who needs to make money and to keep his self-interest going. Otherwise, he's going to have nothing after this is all over. So he's doing everything to stack the deck in his favor so when he leaves office, he's going to be richer than when he went in. I, I don't all think it's all about money, Alex. I think that he is making decisions that are benefiting 
the people who would be the ones that would have debts against him. So, in other words, that's more valuable than money. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, I think he was in a situation where being coming <laughs> president was his only way. This was like the greatest thing that could happen to him because now he has carte blanche to essentially do anything he wants, anytime, anywhere. And I know we say no one's above the law, but we do provide our presidents with a wonderful uh, you know, position. We don't go after them like we would the common man. So they can do outrageous things. And the worst we do is have some politics. And then afterwards, everybody forgets everything. Oh, they're part. I mean, even Ford pardon Nixon, you know, and, and, and on and on. When you become president, that is essentially a hat that is basically get, gets you the get out of jail for free card. For because the rest it's of your one life one man in the world. It's called the <clears throat> executive branch, and it has one third of the power in the United States. It takes it takes 525 uh, congressmen and 100 senators to have the same power as one president. You know, because the executive branch is the president. Yeah, but and, it's only know, one. It's only one third of the government. I understand, I but it's in the hands of system, one man. Our system has failed, and the reason it's failed is because what we used to rely on was that whether, regardless of your party, at a certain point, you could make a decision in the best interest of the country, regardless of your party. We are, we're beyond that now. Now, when it comes down to it, it's how many do you have, how many do we have, and that's the way it's going to go. And that's not the system that was intended. The, it, it was reasonable minds could have a rational discussion free from the corruption of money and politics. And we're, no, we're so far from that that we can't, we can't even do it. The system, in my opinion, has failed us. Our system is, is I, I agree with exposed you. I agree with you, Bree. for the flaws it has. Yep, yep, I agree with you. I think it's an absolutely failed system. I think maybe it is a it is a form of government which is ineffective in this time, place, and time. It was great when people were sitting around riding on horses and owning uh, slaves and, you know, having a, a uh, you know. But t today, I don't, think it's, I don't think the Constitution is held up at all. I think the Constitution is a big failure, to be honest with you. I think the Trump, ideal, has, well, Trump has uh, challenged the status quo. He's challenged the way he hasn't challenged uh, shit, Phil. He has simply reinvested in corruption. Uh, you know, you say he's corrupt. I look at the economy and I look say at the are people good. he makes his pals. Uh, Roy Cohn was as corrupt as they come, Phil. Rudy Giuliani as corrupt as they come. I think he's a stand-up guy. Oh, he's a stand-up guy? Oh, Just check he and Bernard Carrick and the kind of mis uh, deeds they were into, okay? They're self-proclaimed corrupt. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Alex, like with Roy Cohn, you would say he's probably one of the most evil person of the 20th oh, century. Oh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Now, if you're, think about this, Phil. You're Trump at that time in the early 80s. He was rich. He could pick anybody he wants to defend him because he has the money. Why would you want to pick a guy like that? Because no one's he's a winner. But he can have another winner. He can have F. Lee Bailey. F. Lee Bailey's a loser and a drunk. Everything's going a little slow for me. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? He His friends are sketchy at, at best. Oh, you know, so your friends are sketchy. No. <laughs> you know? No, but... Uh, you would, just, you know, really, just, uh, would you really want to wait, 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 Kevin? Yeah. I, I, wait, I, Kevin, I, I, Kevin I, wanted I, to say something, Phil. Kevin. Just an FYI, they have bailed for the evening and they're going to vote tomorrow. I yield back. <laughs> <laughs> strike the last the last uh, the last answer. I yield the, back. Strike Mr. the last Chairman. word. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's just uh, it's it's it, it, that shows you the inefficiency of the system. Okay, that shows you the inefficiency of the system. That shows you the inefficiency that there isn't anybody in Congress or anybody in the White House or anybody anywhere that really gives a fucking shit. 
You know, See, here's another question I would ask Phil and even you, Alex. Wouldn't we better off now not having any political parties? You might have some people from both sides actually have to agree with other people. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Today, I show you just the absolute kind of corruption. Uh, shut up, Mickey. Um, <laughs> Uh, the thing that, that went on today, which was just amazing, is this one guy who went out after <gasps> Biden's son about his drug problem. Yeah, yeah, I heard okay. that. Okay. And this guy, this guy had a DUI, for Christ's sake. You know, hey, a pot yeah, calling the fucking kettle I mean, black. Yeah. At hey, least I on coco at least on cocaine, guys... uh, at least on cocaine, you keep your eyes open while you're driving. You know. Did you hear? Ain't no sleepy uh, Joe. Did you hear today that there was a vote on uh, on jo um, uh, uh, Boris Johnson, and that uh, he won handily? Is that what I heard in the news? Yes. That he had three hundred and eighty-three yes. yes, seats. Yes, because the British are as stupid as we are. <laughs> well, that also means that Brexit will take place because now he has a majority mm -hmm. and he can uh, pull the UK out of uh, the. European Union, and there's also a deal in the in the midst between Boris Johnson and Trump, mm -hmm. uh, a trade deal. Uh, that well, will... there is no trade deal. That's the problem. There is no trade deal. Uh, I understood. That no, there, was a there trade is deal no. With the UK. Phil, there is no trade deal. I, why do you say that? Because I, uh... I was hearing it tonight. The British are worried about this. That there is no trade deal with the United States. Well, uh, I guess it puts them in this position where they can negotiate a trade deal. You no, know, it doesn't put them in a position. Negotiate it with China, no. or they're going to negotiate it with us. Supposedly, Trump says he's made a deal with China, which is probably no deal well, at all. We tweeted that out again. Yeah, they were talking about that I today. thought he said a deal that was imminent. Week, this guy. Yeah, and it's probably he no deal. It it's probably just to affect the markets, I believe. It's probably no deal at all. It's like, and, okay, and let's, now let's they're going to vote on NAFTA. But getting back to this Brexit thing, yeah. uh, it's interesting that this vote had gone that way. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, so it, now the people have spoken. And, uh, yeah, and the people in, in England are as stupid as we are. <laughs> well, I mean, the, Brexit, stupid, Brexit was the idiot. stupidest <laughs> idea and in the worst self-interest uh, of, of, of the Brits. It was just amazing how bad it was for the Brits. You know, I mean, well, it, how can it be bad for the Brits if they haven't done it yet? It's bad for the Brits because it's gonna it's gonna turn out to be horrible for the Brits. All right. Well, let's see. Bree's back, so let me put him back in uh, in play they here. They didn't want to go back to the 1970s. Huh? They didn't want to go back to the 1970s. What do you mean? That, what, how do you mean that, uh, Bree? I want to go back. That they didn't that's want what to they've done. Was what, that's what uh, Corbyn was offering, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was Corbyn the anti-Semite? Really? There, there was uh, one guy running against him. I thought it was the Labor Party, and the guy was a major anti-Semite. Uh, I thought it was Corbyn. Uh, you know, I get mixed up with these names. I'll tell you, he's a major anti-Semite. Not, Trump? don't tell me Trump. Not after he well, we has invoked uh, a. I uh, say Trump is an anti-Semite. Deep down well, in his heart Trump of hearts, did, in his heart of hearts, he's a he's an anti-Semite. What he just did was he, he put it's in nice legislation. Uh, it's not legislation. What is it when you write a? Uh, a executive, executive order. order. Executive order. Yeah, they mean that, nothing. They mean nothing. Yeah. But it said that, uh, you know, the BDS movement and all of those things uh, is, um, uh, what did he call it? Uh, bad. Uh, no, I don't. Bad. I think uh, he called it anti-kike. Yeah, well, anti-Semitism. And he, and he said that it's, it's, it's hate. And uh, he, he put a ruling in that you, you can't do that. Well, we'll yeah. see what happens. And, 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 and so he did an executive order. You can, yeah. Anybody can write a fucking executive order, Phil. It's a yeah, memo on nice it's, paper. It's, it's a memo law. on nice paper. Yeah, with that it's big a, flamboyant the, signature. It's the law of the of the land right now. 
Until uh, somebody because, challenges it in court, in which case it doesn't uh, stand yeah. the paper it's written on. Although the Ninth Circuit is now being populated by many more Trump-appointed judges. That, you know, oh, so we've, look stacked, at that we've stacked and, the fucking deck. Rather than, the, rather than just hire uh, jurists who uh, uh, know how to read the law and interpret it, we get a bunch of biased assholes who are well, going to make, uh, make Trump well, rich. You know, I, I, I look at it as that Phil, the people that Phil. are there on the liberal side are the biased Phil, assholes. Phil, 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 stop it. You know, I mean, come hey. on. Come on, get some common sense. That is common sense. No, it's you not know, common you, you sense. You look at a guy, uh, look at his uh, Kavanaugh. You know, uh, here's a guy that is actually a real jurist. And, oh, you know, yeah, the, oh, yeah. The left, yeah, sure. the left has tried to assassinate him in every which way they to, can. Uh, he's a real you know? jurist, loves to party. Yeah, yeah, beer. Uh, so, you know, and, they, and they've marched out these women trying to accuse him of yeah, things. Phil, that, they that, have that no was proof. last year's news, okay? Yeah. Well, he's in the Supreme Court now. He's in the Supreme Court now, so you got a rapist on the Supreme Court. He'll probably vote for oh. rape. Yeah. Uh, well, was, uh, you can only hope. Rape will be legal <laughs> soon. So, you know. Yeah, but, but if you it, talk about but, it, then I'll sue you. But it's a law that's been made too late for you, so it doesn't matter. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of rape, I hear that Harvey Weinstein's going to walk. No, he's, he's, no, he's, not, he's not going to walk. Is he not? No. no, he's still got all the charges against him. I hear that he's paying people off. No, but thing. he's paying off the people who are suing him. Oh, good. Hopefully he sees Civil jail. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't mean you admit uh, guilt. You know, it's, yeah. they, they did what they did. It's so that he, do, he doesn't have to admit guilt. Right. Um, there we go. There's... Uh, there's Brady. So do you think he'll get his studio back once he pays everybody off? No, no, he just had to give the studio away in order yeah. to pay everybody off. Yeah. No, but he isn't paying a penny. The studio is. If this thing goes through, there's, there's a chance it won't. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the $25 million is going to be spread out over, I think, 25, 30 women, something like that. Yeah. So I want my share. He tried to bet. Well, the me. lawyer gets his skim. You know, yeah. before all of that, so it's only twenty five million. That doesn't yeah, sound like twenty five million to settle all the cases against him. Being paid by a bankrupt insurance company. Do you know <laughs> that Trump paid more than that to settle the school lawsuit. He paid twenty five million shit. Uh, for, for the people that felt they were defrauded uh, on yeah, Trump University. Yeah, it is, it is twenty five million. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, oh wait a minute, I got it here. Hold on a second. I, I printed it last night, and then I didn't. Uh, um, after two years of legal wrangling, Harvey Weinstein and the board of his bankrupt film studio have reached a tentative $25 million settlement agreement with dozens of alleged sexual misconduct victims. I, You know what this is about? It's really the suit against the company. Yeah. And it, it, it's being settled. Uh, yeah, a couple of the big stars aren't going to get get into it either. Yeah, they're well, still they're still hanging. Well, they ha they uh, got who is it? Hey, you know something? Like I got an apartment for for six, five years uh, without paying rent. They got careers, and all they yeah. had to do was fuck uh, Harvey. You know, you know, a lot of these. Uh, pictures and and uh, people wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the promotion. Oh, that's that Weinstein right. No, did. Weinstein knew how to play, how to game the system, so his pictures could win. Yeah. And so people like Gwyneth Paltrow threw him to the wolves after during all of this. She wouldn't have had a career. She's a shitty actress. What did she ever win an Academy Award for? Huh? Are the ones who, and the ones who are more defensive and more vitriol. Yeah, they did more things with him. They did more things with him. That's my that's my opinion. They're, and they're they're frustrated about that, and the, they're sort of lashing out like. Well, oh, I mean, I'm not here to defend. Uh, I'm not here to defend yeah. his horrible behavior. On the other hand, uh, I'm I'm here to say that a lot of women took advantage of that weakness in him, and he made them stars. He got them Academy Awards. <clears throat> you yeah. know. And uh, so, uh, quit being, uh, so some of them don't need to get paid. They got paid. Yeah. 
you know? Well, now that we know they're a prostitute, it was just a matter of no, no, negotiating no, the price. I'm not saying they're a prostitute. I'm not saying well, they prostituted all. themselves for I'm, a I'm career. I'm not saying that at all. But well, and and, and a lot of us, uh, a lot of us prostitute ourselves in one way or another for a career. Right. Phil. I've tried, but nobody's taken. Well, no, it's not <laughs> a matter that just because you spread your legs, you're 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 prostituting yourself. You know, I mean. Um, but there are a lot of women out there who owe their careers to Harvey Weinstein. That's all I'm saying. Whether or not what, and I'm not, that's not excusing what he did. Because there were a lot of women who didn't get careers out of it, who had to spread their legs for Harvey. And what a disgusting, vile thing that must be to have to do. And they didn't get anything out of it. So they should get part of that $25,000. You know? 25 million, yeah. 25 million, now, excuse Har me. Harvey's wife wasn't bad looking either. Yeah. So? Was, yeah, she left him. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and now Harvey's got a bad back. Did you see that in court? He was going oh, to court in a walker. Yeah. He was on a walker. Yeah. He needs some of this, this today, ibuprofen. Yeah. 800, a little ibuprofen. Milligrams. Yeah, 800 <laughs> ibuprofen. Yeah, well, I mean, also, I mean, he, maybe he could get what you got, uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, yeah, you can get one of them stimulators. Yeah. Then we could turn it up on him. Yeah, turn make it up. Him dance. <laughs> make him dance. Make him dance, Harvey. Dance. <laughs> dance, Harvey. Dance. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is an interesting item. You know Sinclair Broadcasting is, don't you? Yeah, the fairest broadcasting in the nation. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, really? Isn't that the one that has the subliminal messages? Mm -hmm. Think right, think mm -hmm. right. Well, they also do something else. They uh, they they turn out these uh, these must run uh, items, commercials, or well, yeah. not commercials, news, but must news, run news, news items. They have to run in all their newscasts, which are very biased and very slanted, and all of that. Well, the must run political commentary segments that have come under fire at Sinclair Broadcast Group are being terminated by the company. The segments have been hosted by former Trump White House staffers uh, Boris Epstein. I, I don't know how you pronounce that. While Sinclair also recently hired Amicia Cross at, uh, to present the Democratic perspective. Uh, he will report uh, reportedly move to the sales-focused role with the company. Instead, Sinclair will be focusing more on resources on local investigative journalism. Uh, NBC News quotes a memo circulated to the staff on Wednesday in which the company says, we have to shine a light on our value uh, on our value proposition every quarter in every newscast. Therefore, we will be expanding our local investigative journalism footprint in our daily newscast, and we are excited to dedicate more time in our newscast to report critical and relevant issues. Uh, to a lot of additional airtime for the storytelling, we will be ending the commentary segments this Friday, December 13th. So they're out of that business now. You know. Yeah. Now, uh, I, tomorrow's Friday. The 13th. I, I, I think part of it, part of it was that uh, was a thing with, uh, with uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Nancy Pelosi. And the fact that that the reporter from Sinclair got in her face. Oh, yeah. And she, she took out said, after she him. She pulled a Catholic card. You, well, she didn't pull the Catholic card. Phil, why yeah, do you she always... Said, I'm Catholic. I don't do that. Well, no, but she, pull, she pulled the right card. Look. She said, look, you know, she says, I don't hate Trump. And I don't like the assertion that I hate anybody. Because I'm a, I was raised a Catholic and we don't hate anybody. Okay. That's the Catholic Who's card. Who's the guy from Texas that calls in to Jack's show and used to call into your show? Scott Boddicker. Right. Oh, he hates me. <laughs> so he's Catholic. He doesn't hate you. He, he, he prays for you every night, Phil. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, but that was a Sinclair reporter. And I yeah. think that's one of the reasons they decided to get out of the Out of that. I heard, I heard there was subliminal messages in their reports. No. No, no, no. What, what no, was that, it, a couple of years ago? It was this must-run commentary oh. that they were doing oh. that were being run like they were news items. I you see. Know. Yeah. Uh, and um, they're, they're out of that business, so good. You know, it's about time they got out of it. 
Well, now, if they're going to have local news, it's probably going to have a conservative bent because they are a conservative uh, news-style organization. Well, you know, uh, it bothers me when I, when I hear that. Uh, because but it is probably because I, I just I, I think that if you're going to put pass something off as news, you should try to be as unbiased as it is possible to be. Now that's I what read, got that's what's got me so pissed off about MSNBC. I don't I feel read, they are unbiased. I read the Washington Times, which uh, used to be owned by Sung Young Moon. Uh, but the, his editorial, he stayed out of all the editorial staff when he did own it. And I don't know if he owns it today. He's probably dead. But the uh, uh, the idea is, is that they expose stories that are true, but you wouldn't see them exposed on uh, left-leaning networks or left-leaning papers. So Phil, Phil they'll publish what, will you tell me what uh, – would you, would you explain to me a left-leaning network? I'd like to know one. Uh, CNN uh, and MSNBC. Well, to begin uh, with, those are those are uh, news uh, channels. Okay, okay, uh, newspapers. How about the New York Times and the Washington Post? I don't think the New York Times. I think New York Times is perfectly uh, I think even handed. It's so left, it's no, uh, no. It, do you read? Do you read it every day? No, I don't. Eat then, fish, if you don't read so it every day, how do you know that it's that left, Phil? Because the story. I because read you hear that it's that left from your boy Trump. Yes, uh, but I read online. Oh, you read? It, um, it, uh, 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 tell me something recently that was biased. I uh, can't think of it offhand. Oh, okay, so basically you're just doing the trope that no, it's biased. No, it's not a trope. It's, uh, they do stress. You're drinking the Kool-Aid, Phil, and I don't uh, know if it's, sherp, if it's lime or if it's uh, cherry, but it's some yeah, kind of stuff. It's, it's the cherry, but it's yeah. all one flavor. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all one Unsweet. flavor. Yeah. 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 But if you, if for instance, if you look at what stories are being uh, published in the Times or the L.A. Times, whether it be the L.A. Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and then you look at uh, the Washington Times and you see those stories, you're going to see very different stories portrayed on that in that paper than you would in the New York Times or or the L.A. Times. Uh, you will see that. Have you? Notice that, or have you just buried your head in the sand? But if you're reading the whole paper, maybe you don't see that. But you're 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 picking out the stories that are published and put on TV. But no, well, in the Washington Times, those stories aren't seen in other places. Alex would say that they're phony stories because they come from that source. But it's just that they. Well, give me an they, example they, of one of those stories, Phil. I have to look. I haven't read the paper well, I mean, in a few weeks. What do you mean? You have there to you look. go right there. You see, you're I've just been scuba you, diving. You know, you've you you you've you've been fed the Kool Aid, and you're spouting it back okay. at us. Let me go to uh, the. You Washington can't tell Post. me what's in the New York Times because you admit that you don't read it. And you would have to read the whole <clears throat> paper to know that it was non-biased. Because all, all you're right. saying is that. The one article that you saw that was published on TV that everybody's criticizing is the one you're talking about. Okay, so if I go to the Washington Times under politics, uh, White House GOP at odds uh, over Senate impeachment trial, yeah. House Dems fail to break partisan battle lines, Dems impeachment case doesn't sway Wisconsin voters, trial ready, Pelosi faces choice on impeachment What's, what's new there except that it's, it's slanted on the other side? Right, you know, but the. Well, these, what's new these, there, Phil? But because you don't see, uh, uh, oh, uh, George P. Bush condemns Texas GOP for racist episodes. Uh, anyway, what, all you're doing is well, you're, you're not. You're not. You're, you tried to make a point, negative. Phil. You tried to make a point, Phil, and you didn't make it. Oh, F FBI deliberately hid Carter Page's patriotic role as CIA asset. IG report shows. You do you think that you get a no, the Kevin, that was in the hear that was in the hearing Phil the Phil that was in the hearings. Right. It was in the hearings. Uh, yes. Do you, think so? that the, do you think the Washington Post or the New York Times is going to is going to run with that story? No, you're not going to see that story. Because in the because Post, because they're not going to run with that story because the way it's being run in the Washington Times is slanted, and the way the New York Times would run it is unslanted. No, no, that's your opinion. 
You know, that is my you're, opinion. You're, you're, that is my opinion, and I'll stick to it. It's strictly editorial. All I know is I wouldn't see this kind of story in the in the, in the New York Times. You, you you're just not going to see it. You know. <coughs> God. Ooh. What's uh, what story was that? Uh, this one. Uh, FBI deliberately hid Carter Page's patriotic role as a CIA asset. Mm -hmm. IG report shows, Let's and see. it was N by y Rowan Scarborough of the Washington N Times. NYT. What is the story again? Carter Page. Yeah, FBI deliberately. Is that P A I G E? P A G E. A P A G E. P A G E. Well then. P A G E as what? Patriotic role as a CIA asset. CIA so, asset, right? Uh, the IG report yeah. shows. Oh, let so, me see here. Now, let me see here. Let's see if the New York Times has there. that story. I'm just looking to see. It would be a pretty good guess on my part. It's not in the New York Times. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Russia inquiry report on FBI. This is the New York Times. Russia inquiry finds serious errors, uh, but debunks anti-Trump plot. And, of course. Uh, but they say serious errors. Yeah. Uh, and then it, it says what Barr had to say. What does it say that the contradiction that they... Oh, here we uh, go. Uh, or is the wire of Carter Page, a former Trump campaign advisor. Mr. Horowitz said investigators appeared to overstate the strength of their applications. It's pretty well just reporting what went on. Now, you know, the, the a little bias was, there. Uh, yes, the fact was, uh, no, Horowitz no. said that uh, that they actually doctored an email to say that he was not a CIA asset and that uh, he was working uh, in, uh, in association with the Russians so that they could get the FISA report uh, 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 used as uh, proof for a, a FISA warrant. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the Steele report uh, for use as a FISA warrant. So therefore, this story has a lot of credibility, but you'll never see it reported that way by the New York Times, because that you know proves that uh, Obama's White House and that uh, the FBI uh, were doing really bad things. Oh yeah, with the Obama White House, they were just so corrupt and horrible. <laughs> yeah, Boy. well, you know, uh, the FBI they work for, they worked for him, right? They work for Trump too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they worked against Trump. I don't know. About when that. did they work against Trump? Well, they, they doctored this thing to create a way to surveil him and his uh, his people. Part uh, of the they sound just like all them days, guys, all day today. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're right. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Hey, Tony, you're laughing. You work for, what's the name of the mayor of New York now? What's his name? Uh, de Blasio. De Blasio. Your check is signed by de Blasio. He probably does have a hand in it. You're, you're, I you're on the take. <laughs> yeah. I don't like him that much. But, but you know, you got it. You know what it comes down to, I think. I think Trump, what I find really, truly amazing is how, is how basically everybody's, doesn't trust anything anymore because as soon as he says something, people are actually doubting everything. Did you ever have? Did you? I mean, he yeah, I get it every night from Alex. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is a, a good point, Tony. And I, I do not join on that bandwagon. I, I just, I, it's regrettable that I we mean, get the to FBI that. FBI is in on it. It's like a big conspiracy, and only Trump knows who the bad guys are. It's like. He sounds like a like a common hood, like Phil. Like you know, it's like that crazy gangster who showed up in court in the pajamas. He was sane. He was just trying to plead insanity. You're watching too much TV. Well, you got a president. You got a president here who uh, who wanted to uh, um, hold up, uh, you know, to, to you know hold something he over the head of the Ukrainian president. Yeah, uh, and he was. Uh, it was. Uh, These guys were corrupt. He, he was, was like making sure Phil, that he Phil, had, uh, Phil, when you're talking yeah. Trump, you are talking a criminal. You are talking he, he about a man who became president of the United States in spite of the fact that he was an out-and-out -out fucking crook. 
And, and he had the money to pay three million. Well, let Kevin say points. something here. I heard a couple of points made today that you know there was two years previous that he was giving them money too. Why wouldn't he stopping them then? And that was the corrupt government in Ukraine. He was giving them money the without money. even thinking about it. I mean, he's strong on this came, month. He I mean, this year aware. all of a sudden he decides Kevin. something's going to change. When Don't they got a new he, president, why? Why did all of a sudden? Aware. Phil, let let okay, Kevin quit. Let, let Kevin finish. No, no, no. This is Phil. when he he gave him money last year, didn't he? Yes, he did. Okay, that's when they were corrupt. He didn't even yes. question it then. Right, but there's there was a new president, and the new president said that he was running on an anti-corruption platform. Okay, so and why did so you Zelensky, decide now to question but it, the guy? But it wasn't it wasn't Zelensky. That they gave you the mean the new president before. of the U Ukraine, the guy who plays a penis, uh, a, a, yes. a a piano with his penis? He yeah. does? And, and, yes. and wouldn't you ask before oh you give him $400 million dollars whether or not, you know... <laughs> I guess my point is that if he's given him money for, what, two years two years prior to a corrupt government, and now the, the new government is non-corrupt, why is he all of a sudden questioning it? Because he's doing his due diligence. Oh, come yeah, on. But th really? that's not my point. My point is <laughs> yeah. he gives it to the corrupt government without even questioning it. Now, all of a sudden, the government's going to go straight, and, the, and, and he's questioning it. Well, I, maybe I that's don't think he was accurate. aware as he was once Biden spoke in that's front of the— That's uh, Well, uh, he spoke in front of the uh, Council on Foreign Relations on film, on camera, and said that he, Biden said that he withheld over a billion dollars from Ukraine unless they fire the guy that was investigating Burisma, which, you know, made Trump aware that uh, there was corruption going on in that government. By the and, way, uh, I don't think uh, uh, Biden said that. He said it no. to verbatim. To who? Uh, uh, on camera to the crowd at the Council on Foreign Relations. Well, I'd like to hear it, Phil. I'd like to hear it, Phil. Well, you can hear it. You can Google it. The Biden, Council on Foreign Relations, uh, uh, yeah, firing. Find, I believe everything mm -hmm. on the Internet. Well, it, it was him. It was him talking. Oh, he did talk it, you know, it wasn't uh, one of those uh, set -up He does say calls. crazy things, Biden, so this could be true. Uh, yeah, on foreign relations, Ukraine. Here it Probably is. Forgot he said it. Yeah. Biden brags about CFR meeting about <clears throat> what is the um, uh, about withholding aid to Ukraine to force firing of a prosecutor. Well, he did. Right. And, okay. And they've got him on film saying it at CFIR. Mm -hmm. So that still doesn't what mean, mean that Trump isn't a <laughs> fucking crook. <laughs> No, but at least he's investigating uh, this uh, oh, yeah. malfeasance oh, yeah. on uh, Biden's uh, oh, part. Oh, yeah, it's really important. Yeah, it, it is. It's really important. No, he, he wants malfeasance on Biden's part because Biden could be his competitor. But where he's yeah. making his big mistake is he may get impeached over trying to get rid of a guy who isn't going to be his eventual competitor. Correct. Yeah. Well, uh, who do you think is going to be his competitor? I don't know. I think we're heading towards Buttigieg. Yeah, no, uh, he got side railed. He got yeah, derailed. yeah, something happened to him he too. Got what was it? Who the judge is out? Why is he yeah, out? What did he do? What did he do? Oh, oh, McKinsky. McKinsky. They started to reveal his clients. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out he's he's, you know, completely anti Bernie Sanders. To tell, to tell you that. Uh, he, he's he supporting the big guys and the corporations. Right. Not he the little for guys and the. Re what was the thing he worked for? It was like McKinsey. Yeah, but or... he he revealed all his his clients. Once he got caught. No, he revealed. And he also was caught on camera saying, uh, "I, you know, essentially, I'm I like the billionaires. I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna do anything hey. against them, and they can give me as much okay. money as they want." Well, it's a little late for us to get into oh, this. Oh, this is interesting. Man. But I still say Buttigieg is gonna be the guy. Anyway. But I, I'll probably Dr. be Mingling wrong. I'm Iowa. wrong about everything. Sanders to play New Hampshire. Uh, well, yeah. Anyway, if Sanders gets nominated, it's all over. Trump may as well just slide right into the White House, grease his yep. ass, and slide yep. in there. Anyway, hey, everybody, thank you so much for having It'll be worse than McGovern. If, uh, if, okay, okay. Uh, I, can, I, can I end this show, Phil? <laughs> well, did you play the theme? <laughs> yes, it's playing right now. You hear that? Well, turn it up. Okay. Well, I don't want to turn it up. Jeez, oh,
Almighty. Anyway, uh, listen, thanks, Phil. Thanks, uh, Kevin. Thanks, uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 boy. Uh, thanks, Tony, and thanks, Bree. Man, I'm out of it. Uh, that, that's it for tonight. I guess we'll have hardly anybody calling tomorrow night, too. And if that's the case, that may be the last show I will ever do on this fucking network. Um... I'm getting a little tired of this. It's, get, it's exhausting me. Plus, by Monday, I will find out what I'm going to have to do for this cancer. So, I may be out of the business for a while anyway. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me uh, thank uh, all of you. And if you will give a big wave goodbye, I'll wave right back at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the uh, participation on this program better improve tomorrow night or... Uh, I, I'm just giving up on it. I, you know, I don't have to do this. Right, you know. Anyway, listen, uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. Uh, so stay tuned for that. He'll probably have a whole bunch of people calling him. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin, if he does his program. Uh, Damian Chaplin is here with The Exchange. We'll be here at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Ah.